The idea is calm, studying and examining, seeing what others have done and excluding it, trying always to do something new without copying what others have done. Sometimes it's interesting and sometimes not. My father was with the Istituto Nazionale Luce, and he was practically the first to enter Addis Abeba, walking backwards in his determination to record General Badoglio entering the city. All the while, afraid some sniper would shoot him in the back. The date of the conquest coincided with my birthday, May 11th, 1936. I turned 16. It was shooting documentaries in Africa, where the story demanded wide pans and camera movements that could be descriptive, that Renato realized that the camera needed a support. A support for movie cameras, totally silent and with a new concept. He couldn't film everything from the shoulder because the camera's weight would tire him out too quickly. Cameras those days were much heavier than they are today. A kind of wobbling would set in, causing the image to lose its steadiness. The idea came to him when the Instituto Luce received a tripod from the U.S., which was the first of this series of objects and that enabled the cameraman to do perfectly smooth, vibrationless pan shots. This tripod, though functional, had one enormous defect. It was noisy, and movies, with all the extra noise that can occur on a set, I just couldn't take it. A camera head came out that was called the victory head. This head and tripod naturally was given to the Istituto Luce. It was put on the ship Giulio Cesare, which was sunk off the coast of Greece. And this tripod, the first prototype, is still underwater. And this was in 1940. My father died in 1942. My father was left alone, Renato's only son, in a very difficult historical time, and he came to miss his father, whom he'd actually never seen much of, because Renato was always abroad, and all Guido was left with were the designs for the victory head. My father never had the pleasure of seeing a mass production of what had been his invention. I did it, and I built several hundred of them at a time when the financial situation was a little heavy. And I began the production of these tripods, which got a terrific reception all over Europe. And these heads ended up being spotted, 
by two very important gentlemen who've practically made world movie history, two Germans from Munich, Mr. Richter and Mr. Arnold, the two founders of Arnold and Richter of Aeroflex fame. They see the M head and the L head and find them to be perfect for their movie cameras. And so began this terrific collaboration that practically guaranteed the success of their products and above all, the spread of them worldwide. I'd hired a machine shop to manufacture my very special tripods. And every time I ordered a batch of them, the price went up. I told these gentlemen, look, you've got to stop it, because if not, I'll open a machine shop myself and produce them on my own at a, at a lower price. My threat made this Mr. Mancini laugh. And he said, you're just a mechanical engineer. You're not capable of actually making these tripods. I said, don't worry, I'll manage. From our collaboration with Arnold and Richter, who like the Cartoni product and begin buying it in numbers that to us were extraordinary, like always more than 12, 12 to 24, something unheard of, <laughs> because for us who were selling only in Italy, it was like now and then a cameraman would drop by and ask for one or two. From there, we got the idea of turning ourselves into a real serious industry. So at that point, uh, my father, who was Caterpillar's head of sales, um, fired himself and with his liquidation pay, bought the first machines and opened his first machine shop. It lasted a few years until one day Mr. Arnold called and said, listen, Cartoni, they've come out with a tripod head in Australia that moves on fluid, that is, Hand shots, instead of being regulated by a flywheel movement, are regulated by a fluid resistance. And this fluid head also ended up in the hands of a friend who was interested in cinematography repairs, and he told me, Listen, Guido, a tripod has shown up here that works with a very dense fluid which I don't know what it is. I went to his machine shop, we opened it, and my friend ran a finger over the fluid and tasted it. It was sweet. We established that the first fluid tripod was made with molasses. Mr. Arnold told me, look, Cartoni, try to make something fluid to substitute the gyroscopic effect. I went right to work and came up with a, a type of brake made of concentric discs, one next to the other, and it rested in a bath of silicon fluid. Guido Cartoni decided to give a variability to the fluid head. And so he invented a modular device. It was called FL4, Fluid 4, which gave the possibility of having four different speeds, depending on which gear was engaged. To do this, he drew inspiration from technology that already existed, because it's a technology that's in car transmissions and other vehicles. Therefore, he never deemed it necessary to patent this technology because it seemed so obvious. It was copied by a competitor, which is a brand competing with us today. The gentleman was a Bavarian cameraman named Wendelin Sachtler, who brazenly copied our FL4 device and went on to patent it. 
che praticamente copiò il congegno dell'FL4 andando poi addirittura a brevettarlo. The German's patent, which was also valid in the US, caused us enormous damage because when we tried with some agents to sell tripods in Hollywood, we received a letter from a patent office and a legal firm of US lawyers telling us that we didn't have the right to sell our product in the US in as much as this product was covered by the American patent. We didn't want to give up, naturally. You know, my father's a very determined person, and he was so ticked off by these, by being robbed of his idea and, and being shut out of the market, that he immediately went to work to find um, an advancement of his invention. And the advancement of the invention came with the patent of the module. And the module, which is um, a kind of hermetically sealed box, contains the fluid. And he conceived it and patented it this time in America as well. And so uh, we could, a couple of years late, thanks to the block they'd put up in the States, we could rightfully get in with a patent on a completely innovative product that performed even better than that of the competition. And finally, we got back into America. Ancora più performante di quello della concorrenza e finalmente potremmo rientrare in America. Ci vuole del tempo. It takes time, application. Questa invenzione fu poi riconosciuta. This invention was then recognized when they gave us the Oscar, the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences, for the invention of the selectable and repeatable fluid modules in a camera supporting head. And this was very sweet revenge. I'm a mechanical engineer, so I like mechanics, and so I gave it my all. The formula that Guido has brought to his field ever since he started working, in the end, turns out a winner because today, after 60 to 70 years, we're still a point of reference for world cinematography. So this is the demonstration that quality, coupled with passion, surely pays. The Chinese have copied many times our products and those of our competitors. You see that they've copied with extraordinary reverse engineering because they've managed to, to reproduce things almost perfectly. But the funniest thing is that today we're selling to China State Television and the China Film Group, which is the Chinese cinematography agency, our products made right here in Rome. They don't buy the copy made in their industrial district in Beijing or in any other Chinese city. They want the best. And they know perfectly well, they fully realize that the best is made in a certain way that they haven't yet achieved. We're not a very big company, and there are about 60 of us, but we keep up with even the biggest competitors. Lots of people come in and they say, I never imagined there was something like this here. That is, the atmosphere is unusual. We even get frequent school groups and they say, wow, there's a factory here that's got everything. La percezione che che l'utente ha di della marca Cartoni, the perception the end user has of the Cartoni brand is unbreakably linked to family. That is from the figure of an aging patriarch to the figures of the daughters who work together with him, to a team of workmen who are like a family, where there is a very informal atmosphere, an atmosphere uh, where once a week, if it's someone's birthday, uh, we order pizza from the pizzeria downstairs so we can celebrate all together. 
And when a baby is born, it's everyone's party. And when someone unfortunately passes away, the factory closes down and everyone goes to the funeral. And this is, let's say, a human side that keeps on going in a company like ours and which could not survive in an industrial giant tied to the dictates of the economy. And passion for the job is what gives that cut above, which then makes the product more, let's say, user-friendly for the filmmaker. Because he feels that in this product there's been passion, care, and an extra touch that surely you don't find in, say, a standard industry product in a shiny box. We give a five-year warranty, which is an eternity, but not only do we guarantee perfect operation for five years, but we continue to repair objects that come back after 20, 30 years of use. And if by chance the spare parts aren't available, we don't think twice about remaking them. Because fortunately, having an archive of designs, we pull out the design, and even if economically it's a bit of a contradiction, because settling down to create a unique part to redo an axle box rather than a brake drum, it's expensive, but it doesn't matter. Because for the love of seeing the 30-year-old head and tripod still working, we do it. And this is something highly appreciated by the end user. Who's the user that appreciates our product the most? It's the operator who maybe bought his head and tripod with great sacrifice because he saved up for them, and now he's got them, he loves them. And if they break down on him, he doesn't want new ones. He wants his to be repaired, and we satisfy him. And we still have tons of ideas. And so does he, so do I, and so do our staff members. The staff members who started with us have grown with us and practically do nothing else than continue with the same philosophy. And so they look around, trying to pinpoint what the market needs, what better instrument can we turn out. There's an ongoing interface with the user with whom we talk, with whom we have friendly relations. And they come visit us, even when they don't need anything specific, but just for the pleasure of chatting or expounding an idea, like, uh, I thought of a film where I'd like to do this movement. There's no thingamajig that can do it. How can I get this movement? For us, it's a party to gather around a table and chat with them and dream. If something comes out of it, all the better. He had to do a slew of other jobs to then be able to pursue his dream, which was building camera heads for movie cameras and being an instrument for cinema and television. <laughs>